three, two, one. We are the first company to ever launch any type of private commercial satellite out of the, the country. There were a couple of CubeSats and so on that were launched before this. But in terms of a fully fledged commercial private satellite, we were the first ones when we, we launched Chakuntala in April of 2022. This was happening from Cape Canaveral in Florida through a SpaceX rocket. The night of the launch of Shakuntala was probably the most exciting and uh, fun night of my life, at least personally. And I think for a lot of people, it was very instrumental too. Seeing something you had worked very hard on take off leave the confines of Earth into the orbit around our planet was a very special feeling. Hi, I am Avay Samad. I am the founder and CEO of Pixel Space Technologies. We are building the world's first constellation of hyperspectral imaging satellites that will increase the amount of information we can capture about the Earth by 50 times helping us make agriculture more efficient, helping us reduce pollution, helping us make the world more sustainable place. I was always fascinated with space ever since I remember. So I've always wanted to be an astronomer, an astronaut, uh, astrophysicist at different points in time. When we were participating in, in the Hyperloop, it was, a, I think, a very formative learning experience. There was no one that uh, had previously built and uh, built any anything re resembling a Hyperloop pod. Then what happened was SpaceX created a competition where they built a mile-long vacuum tube at their headquarters in, in Los Angeles and put out a challenge to teams around the world to build a Hyperloop pod that could race there. 2,500 global teams had applied and uh, we decided to participate just because we thought we would get a chance to meet Elon, uh, Elon Musk. And thankfully to our surprise, we got selected and then we kept on getting to different stages. And then finally we got to a point where we ourselves had to design and build this pod. Uh, we were able to present it to Elon Musk and the rest of the team. That's when they took us on a tour of the SpaceX factory. So looking at those rocket engines being built and the Falcon 9 booster that they keep in front of their office, that was the first rocket to ever land back on Earth. I think that was the Eureka moment for me that I want to devote the rest of my life to space technology one way or the other. came back to college and just dived deep into what was happening in space, everything from space stations to rockets to in-space manufacturing. But satellite data in terms of its analysis was something that was very, very new, especially in India and surrounding regions. While working with this data, there was a realization that existing data just isn't good enough. We need to do a lot better in terms of building instruments and sensors and satellites that can capture information in a lot more detail, identify detail that is invisible to satellites in space today, see the unseen. And uh, that's when the idea was that okay, we will build and deploy a constellation of hyperspectral imaging satellites and the hyperspectral part is what would uh, set us apart. Uh, so that was how the idea for Pixel came to be uh, through the Hyperloop uh, experience. Humans see information and light in three wavelengths only. So we see things in the red, green and blue. So that's why you call it RGB imaging. That's what satellites were for the longest amount of time. Then there's another type of imaging called multispectral imaging, which is what the, the most recent satellites did until until now, which is beyond RG and V, you have a few infrared wavelengths that you're able to also capture. What we are doing is hyperspectral imaging, which is many steps beyond that, where instead of just three wavelengths in RGB or about 10 wavelengths in multispectral, we are now looking at about 300 wavelengths in hyperspectral. If I were looking at an agricultural farmland with an RGB, multispectral and hyperspectral image, with an RGB image, I would only be able to tell you or with human eyes, I'll be able to only tell you that, yes, this is a farm. This is not a farm and that's about it from far away. With multispectral, I can go one step beyond and identify health status of the crops. I can tell you how healthy the crop is. But then hyperspectral is where I am not only able to tell you that, but I'm able to identify species of the crops. I'm able to identify, uh, you know, what nutrient is present in the soil and what is not. I am able to uh, identify the crop diseases or pest infestations that are there. Yeah, I think it's tough in general starting any hardware company, uh, whether that's space or something, especially in India. And it was especially so, I think, four or five years ago. The reason for that is because, one, there is not a lot of grant opportunities for building hardware in the country, which is where most startups in the US or Europe get started from. Because at that stage, no one is willing to invest in you because there's a lot of risk in building hardware, realizing something. 
and then you add space hardware to that equation and then it becomes even more harder for someone to fathom that someone could could build this especially as just four undergraduate students who had not been at isro or somewhere else there was no policy in place there was no encouragement from the government to actually pursue it outside of that and there were a few people within different organizations that wanted to only keep it to the government they didn't want private entities to get into it for example when we were trying to book our satellite for launch in 2018 before you know when we were starting to think about it i just gave a ring to isro and said hey you know we want to launch a satellite with building in india could you do it for us sadly they said there is no process that has been set for an indian company to launch from india but foreign companies there is a very clear process which obviously didn't make any sense but then when the the prime minister and the finance minister announced as a slew of economic measures in 2020 that space will also be now privatized and private companies should and can do things that's when things really started to open up the government actually started helping out we were able to take our satellite and test it at resource facilities we were able to leverage the expertise officially from people in isro currently and so on so yeah it has been i think a, a fresh breath of air post 2020 before compared to before 2020 in terms of uh, the challenges that were there what we are trying to do at pixel is build a health monitor for the planet what that means is being able to see how the amazon rainforest is doing how the polar ice caps are doing how various weather patterns are doing and taking all of that to create like a planetary model that tells us what action to take to make the world a better place i think that's the biggest impact that will come from this